Despite being a small country, Sweden possesses one of the best defense systems in the world. Its huge investments in its military sector has made it more formidable and ready to take on present day threats. This country has recently shocked the world, NATO included, as it tests its new sixth generation fighter jet that boasts of capabilities that even technologically advanced countries are struggling to develop. How much does Sweden invest in its military sector? What capabilities does this next generation fighter boast of? Join us as we delve into the capabilities of the sixth generation fighter that Sweden is secretly testing and has left NATO shocked. As the world of warfare has strategically shifted from the deployment of conventional weapons to nuclear weapons, Sweden has spared no cost in bolstering its defense system and investing millions of dollars in the development of technologically advanced weapons and aircrafts. According to recent reports, this country is now secretly testing its new sixth generation fighter jet, the Saab JAS-39 Gripen. The Saab JAS-39 Gripen is a fast and versatile fighter plane made by a Swedish company called Saab AB. This fighter has special wings and controls that help it fly without any hassle. The newer models can work together with other NATO planes. By 2020, over 271 Gripens have been made and delivered. Interestingly, the development of this aircraft was not just a random decision. Back in 1979, the Swedish government recognizes the need for a new aircraft that was capable enough to replace the older fighter jets that was being utilized by their air force. So they asked Saab, the Swedish company, to design an aircraft that can be used to fight, attack, and also gather information. Saab showed off the first Gripen plane on 26 April 1987, which was also the company's 50th anniversary. Originally, they planned for this aircraft to fly in 1987, but it didn't happen until 18 months later because they encountered some problems with the flight controls. On 9 December 1988, the first prototype took its first flight with a pilot named Steig Holmstrom. But during testing, there were worries about the plane's avionics, especially the flight control system and how stable it was. On the 2nd of February 1989, one of the prototypes crashed while trying to land in Linkoping. After several prototypes were submitted, Saab eventually developed the JS-39, which had its first flight in 1988. However, it only became fully operational in 1996. Yet to make sure that the fighter remains effective against advanced threats, newer versions with better equipment and longer flight times came into use in 2003. There was also a massive upgrade of the Gripen series, which used to be called Gripen NG Next Generation, or Super Jazz, is now referred to as the JAS-39 EF Gripen. The Swedish Air Force and the Brazilian Air Force began using this upgraded version in 2019. The upgrades that the old version underwent includes designing it a bigger body, a stronger engine, creating more room for weapons, and improvements to the cockpit, electronics, and other systems that makes the aircraft perform efficiently. Let us take a short pause on the upgrades the Gripen has been put through and focus more on why the upgrades were needed in the first place. Because before these massive upgrades, JOS served the Air Force with its next generation capabilities and features. Now delving into the details of some of the basic design of the Gripen, starting out from its main controls. The main controls for flying the jet were designed to be used easily with the hands-on throttle and stick principle. This means that the stick in the middle not only helps in flying the plane, but also controls the cockpit displays and weapon systems. The Gripen also made use of a digital fly-by-wire system for flying, with a backup system for the throttle in case the digital one fails. Other important functions like communication, navigation, and decision support data can be accessed through a control panel right above the main cockpit display. It has a system called EP17 Cockpit Display, which was made by Saab to help pilots understand what's happening around them better. This reduces how much the pilot has to do during flights. The Gripen also has a feature called Sensor Fusion, which combines information from different sensors and databases. This information is then shown to the pilot on a head-up display, three big screens, and sometimes on a helmet-mounted display system. Like every other advanced fighter that has been created, this one has three screens that display information in front of the pilot in the cockpit. One displays navigation and the mission data. The second shows the status of the aircraft and electronic warfare information. 
while the last screen displays information on the sensory and fire control of the aircraft. If there are two seats in the jet, the person sitting in the back can use their own screen, which is sometimes different from the main pilot's screen. This feature is really helpful during missions, particularly in missions like electronic warfare and reconnaissance. The upgrading process started in 2010 when Sweden added new computer systems and displays to the Gripen. These new screens can be switched if one of them stops working. So the pilot always has the necessary information displayed before him and does not have to worry about missing important details. Also, Saab and BAE developed the Cobra HMDS for the Gripen, which is like a high-tech helmet that provides extra information to the pilot. It helps with finding targets, gives sensor data, and also shows flight details. This high-tech helmet can also be used at night and has filters for chemicals and biological threats. The helmet and the cockpit have a temporary connection, which makes it easier for the pilot to be ejected safely from his seat in case of danger. As of January 2014, all Gripen aircrafts that were being used were powered by a Volvo RM12 turbofan engine, which is an advanced version of the General Electric F404 engine. This engine has been modified to make it perform better and be more reliable for aircrafts that have single engines, and it is also better at surviving bird strikes. Interestingly, the Gripen has flown for over 143,000 hours without any engine problems, which was a remarkable achievement for a single-engined aircraft. Similar to the Gripen, early test models of the Dassault Rafale, the French twin-engine aircraft also made use of the F404 engines before switching to a different engine for production planes. They thought about using a different engine, the Senecme M88-3, for a version of the Gripen, but let's just say that the plan fell through. However, these advanced Gripen models, the JAS-39E and F, will be powered by the F414G engine, which is the modified version of the General Electric F414. This engine will give the Gripen more power, which would give it the ability to fly faster, even when carrying a lot of weapons without the fear of engine failure when airborne. Volvo Aero, a company that makes engines, suggested they could improve their RM12 engine to match the performance of the F414G, but nevertheless, Saab chose the F414G. They also thought about using a different engine, the Eurojet Ejo 200, but later got rid of the thought. And one intriguing thing about this fighter is that it can be equipped with several weapons besides its main 27mm Mauser BK-27 cannon. Some of these additional weapons include missiles for shooting down other planes, attacking ground targets, and targeting ships. In 2010, the Swedish Air Force upgraded their Gripens to be able to use even more weapons than the earlier mentioned ones, like long-range missiles and laser-guided bombs. Saab also mentioned that customers are at the liberty to choose where they want to get their weapons from. This means that whosoever purchases the Gripen can decide to equip it with weapons of their choice. Despite its light design, the sixth generation fighter jet has a great capacity. During a flight, the Gripen can carry up to 6,500 kilograms of weapons and other equipment like special pods for spying on enemies and marking targets. The Gripen also has high-tech systems for electronic warfare, like jamming enemy radar and detecting incoming missiles. Saab is developing new technology, like a special jammer and a defensive pod to protect against missiles. Saab calls the Gripen a swing roll aircraft for a reason. This is because it can quickly switch between different jobs, like fighting other aircrafts or attacking targets on the ground. The fighter jet controls change depending on what it's doing and it can use different communication systems to communicate with other aircraft or command centers. This fighter can also fly long distances with features like air-to-air -air refueling and an onboard oxygen system. During the Cold War, Sweden needed to be prepared in case there was an invasion. They had a plan called BAS-90, where they spread out their fighter planes in different places to protect the country. So when designing the Greppen, they made sure it could take off and land on short runways covered in snow, and it could get ready for another flight in just 10 minutes or 20 minutes for missions attacking the ground. They also focused on making the Gripen easy to maintain. Many parts need little or no maintenance, and there's a system called HUMS that helps technicians keep the plane in good shape. Saab didn't relent on improving it based on information from systems like HUMS. Despite being effective in any kind of mission, 
It is said that the Gripen costs about 50% less to operate than its closest competitor. This makes it well sought for developing countries because you get an aircraft that can perform exceedingly well with just a little amount. A study from 2012 compared the costs of operating different fighter planes, and the Gripen was the cheapest, costing around $4,700 per hour of flight. The next cheapest plane, the F-16, cost 49% more at 7,000 per hour. The Swedish military advancement is not limited to fighter jets alone. This country boasts of equally advanced submarines and even powerful battle tanks. The Swedish Navy is armed with several assets that makes it suitable for a variety of missions in any kind of water. It has a fleet of 387 ships, and the most renowned are the seven corvettes, nine mine countermeasure vessels, 14 patrol vessels, 165 gunboats, and five submarines. Submarines are very important parts of a country's military arsenal. And Sweden takes pride in its three Gotland-class submarines, which is the alpha of the fleet. The Gotland-class submarines are Sweden's latest submarines and some of the best man-made objects the ocean has ever seen. As of 2008, the Gotland-class attack submarine was one of the newest submarines used by the Swedish Navy. It's mainly built for submarine missions like fighting enemy ships and submarines, gathering intelligence, keeping watch, doing special operations, and laying mines. When the submarine is on the water's surface, it runs on two sets of engines made by MTU. But when it's underwater, it uses a special engine system called the Cockham's Built Stirling Engine AIP. This system powers a generator that can either move the submarine or charge its batteries. Stirling engines are great for submarines because they're very quiet and can use the cold seawater to work better. How long the submarine can stay underwater depends on how much liquid oxygen it has stored but it can last for weeks. Also, they are known for being hard to detect by sound and can penetrate the enemy's territory without getting detected. That aside, these fleets have the ability to handle strong impacts and also have a good combat system. Cockums, the company that developed them, mentioned that they owe their seamless movement to how the hull is designed and because of a special X-shaped rudder. This rudder has four parts for steering, along with two more on the top part of the submarine which helps it turn sharply and move close to the ocean floor. Above all, the ship's systems are automated and computers help steer it in the right direction underwater. So only one person is needed to control it, making the crew smaller, the living spaces better, and the costs lower. As being invisible is very important in having the upper hand in any conflict, these submarines were designed with a lot of features to stay hidden. All the machinery on board is put on rubber to make it quieter and reduce vibrations. The shape of the hull makes it harder to see with sonar and infrared sensors. They have magnets to hide their magnetic signal, coatings to avoid sonar, and radar absorbent material on the mast. Also, the Stirling generator is really quiet, and the propeller turns slowly to avoid making too much noise. This makes them very hard to find underwater, especially in the Baltic Sea where they usually operate. The submarine costs around $100 million. In simulations between one of these Swedish submarines and an American aircraft carrier that weighs way more than it and is 60 times its cost, USS Ronald Reagan, the $100 million submarine swarm, circles around the aircraft carrier and destroys it over and over, over and over again, hypothetically. This realization left the American Navy experts in shock. It became obvious that the Swedish diesel-electric submarines are more than just simple diesel-electric submarines because they wield more power. Also, they are the first submarines in history to feature an Air Independent Propulsion System, or AIP system. The AIP system, known as Sterling AIP, was a game-changer because it didn't need air from the surface to operate like traditional engines. It could extend the underwater endurance of the submarine from a few days to weeks, a level of endurance that was previously only available to nuclear-powered submarines. In addition to the AIP system, the submarine class is characterized by its stealth capabilities and impressive maneuverability. Its stealth comes from having all shipboard machinery isolated and mounted on rubber dampeners to reduce vibrations, a hydrodynamic designed to reduce noise, infrared signature, and active sonar response. 27 independent electromagnets to cancel out magnetic signatures, hull coatings to reduce active sonar response, a mass coated with radar absorbent material, and so on. 
Also, it being able to perform critical maneuvers seamlessly comes from its water-cutting hull design and a well-placed X-rudder. The X-rudder provides four control surfaces along with two mounted on the sail, which enables sharp turns and the ability to operate very close to the seabed. Thanks to these, the submarines are very difficult to detect underwater and can dance around targets before destroying them with ease, as the USS Ronald Reagan might testify. Let's digress and take a look at the Swedish Army and the most revered battle tank, the Leopard II main battle tank that was developed in Germany and operating in the armies of 14 different nations. The Leopard II is globally accepted and respected as a power-boosting addition to any army that has it. This tank is designed to prioritize its crew, protecting them from harm. It has a Dragger NBC over pressurization system that protects the crew against nuclear, biological, and chemical threats. Its H design places explosive components such as ammunition storages and turret hydraulics away from the crew compartment. For exterior protection, this battle tank uses spaced multi-layer armor throughout its design, consisting of a combination of highly ductile steel plates of different hardness elastic materials and other non-metallic materials. The frontal arc of the tank's armor is able to withstand large caliber kinetic energy penetrators and shaped large projectiles up to 125 millimeters in length. The sides and rear two are covered in heavy ballistic and steel reinforced armor skirts, albeit lighter, less formidable armor still. Yes, just as you thought, this tank is one of the few ones that can boast of truly all around protection. Armament. The weapon equipped on the Leopard 2 is the 120mm M256 smoothbore gun from Thin Metal. The gun is fully stabilized and can fire a variety of types of rounds. These include the Israeli LOT anti-tank guided missile that can engage targets that are very far away. The DM-12 high explosive anti-tank rounds and the DM-43 APF anti-tank rounds are capable of penetrating 22 inches of steel from a mile away. What makes this army tank a force to reckon with is that it has the ability to carry 42 of these heavy rounds at a time. For secondary weapons, the tank is equipped with two machine guns. This army tank has been deployed in several conflicts from the 1990s to 2024. In the 1990s, the German army used Leopard 2 tanks for peacekeeping in Kosovo. During the 2000, Dutch, Danish, and Canadian forces sent their Leopard 2 tanks to Afghanistan for the war there. In the 2010s, Turkish Leopard 2 tanks were in action in Syria. And now, in 2023 to 2024, Ukrainian Leopard 2 tanks are fighting in the Russo-Ukrainian War. More recent variants of these tanks are capable of mounting an additional remotely controlled weapon station fitted with a Browning m 2 he heavy machine gun for when the crew decides to go on a full metal spraying frenzy. Sweden operates 120 of these tanks in total, which is more than enough to multiply NATO's firepower by a lot. It is no wonder why Sweden was ranked 37th amongst most powerful nations in the world, despite having a fraction of the population of most world powers and a relatively small military personnel size of 57,000 people. That being said, Sweden might have a small population compared to other countries, but their military capacity is mighty, which makes it a worthy opponent in any conflict. Thanks for watching. While you are still here, click on the link on your screen to check out another of our videos. See you there.